to our lunchtime devotional. This is Pastor Jamie. So glad to have you with us today. Uh, today's a tough day for a lot of us who knew very well Brother Dwayne Pooler, great man of God. Um, got word this morning that he has passed away. We had thought he was doing better. Had some complications over the past few days that it led to ultimately him passing away this morning. It's one of those days you have more questions than you do have answers, uh, but I shared in a memorial service this weekend and also Sunday, the writer Solomon in Ecclesiastes saying there is a time and a season for everything, and we may not understand those seasons, but yet we trust the Lord anyhow. So I lost another mentor today. It's uh, It's been one hit after another with mentors here lately, but God is faithful, and I'm so thankful that song that we opened up with says the blood is still there, and it still has power, and it still has authority, and God is still on his throne today. So glad to see that, Sister Rhonda, you're feeling better today. So thankful for that. We was praying for you yesterday. And so we're glad to have you with us this afternoon as we continue our study on the doors of the Bible. We will 
be on this study throughout this week. So today we're going to talk about the Passover door. And that's why I chose that song as our opening song today. Uh, just, just right before I came home, that song came to my heart and remembered it. Um, but So I looked it up and played that as our opening song for this afternoon. And I'm so thankful uh, that the blood is still there. Amen. So if you got prayer requests, we will join you in prayer. We will want to pray for um, Sister Renee, Jelena, Jeremy, um, their spouses and their uh, brother Dwayne and Sister Renee's grandchildren, all little ones. It'll be a tough time for them, so let's pray for them. Let's continue to pray for uh, Brother Leroy and Sister Mary Paget. Um, continue to pray for Brother Jack Wooters. Um, pray for some friends of mine in Oklahoma. Just read where there's a transition that some of them are facing out there, so lift them up in prayer. God knows the need there. And uh, pray for Jana today at 2 o'clock for that hearing. And uh, just so thankful to know that we have a God that is able. Pray for Noah. He's not feeling well today. He just uh, stepped out the door to go for his his class at school, but not feeling too good today. So lift him up in prayer, if you would, this afternoon. And uh, knowing God is faithful to, to touch him. And he is our strength and our help and our hope. Father, we love you and we thank you today for... For so many things, God, that you've blessed us with. And we're grateful to you for the privilege that we have to serve you, Lord. And I do thank you that you touched Sister Rhonda and her body yesterday. And Noah's needing that touch today in his body. And we just believe you to touch him, God. And the Pooler family's needing comfort and strength. And really, the extended family. There's so many people that's been impacted by the passing of this great man of God today. And I know the impact that he's had on my life and our church and and that just, he's been across this country uh, preaching the gospel, touching lives with their singing, with his anointed preaching, his passion, his testimony. Lord, and I just pray that you comfort his family as they try to make sense of all of this. And each one of us, as we really try to make sense of all of it, knowing that sometimes things just don't make sense. So we just trust you, knowing that you do all things right. And we just ask you to, to touch Sister Jana today in that hearing. And pray, God, for Brother and Sister Paget and their bodies and uh, so many others that are hurting, that are suffering today. Just pray that you'd give them strength and help and comfort. Touch those in Oklahoma. You know the need there. I don't know all the ins and outs of that, but you do, God. And I just pray that you'd help them in their transition time. And just know, Father God, that you're faithful as promised. And we just pray for your anointing upon this devotion today. Pray that you touch our hearts to receive your word. And we'll just thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This devotional study this week's a little different than the, the rest of our studies. The rest of our studies, we had some uh, great details. Uh, yesterday was a pretty simple elementary devotion that we talked about. Uh, the ark door, um, and being that door being salvation. Today, we'll go a little bit deeper we're going to talk about another door of the Bible and uh, called the Passover door. Exodus 12 and 13 says, The blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. He said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, it was about a thousand years after the flood that God used Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egyptian slavery. So the night before they were set free, the Lord instituted the Passover. And that's found in Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. And they were told to sacrifice a lamb without blemish and then put some of the lamb's blood on their doorpost in verse 7. So if the blood was applied, they were spared from that tenth plague. And so in Exodus 12, 12 and 13, we read this. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And I, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Every time I hear that in verse 13, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. 
it just takes me back in time uh, standing there at a pew at wayside church of god many years ago we used to sing that hymn when i see the blood i will pass over you powerful song powerful memories and so what we understand there for the children of israel is that lamb that they sacrificed was their passover uh, lamb and that was their passover offering what they were supposed to do in that time well, we find in 1 Corinthians 5 and 7 in the latter part of the verse that Christ is our Passover. She said, for even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. And so when we look at that Passover lamb and understand about that lamb, we're going to do some comparisons today between that Passover lamb for the time of the children of Israel and Christ, the Passover lamb for us, who was uh, sacrificed for us. So we understand it was to be a lamb. And we know that Christ is the Lamb of God, according to John one twenty nine. said, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Another thing about that Passover lamb was to be a male of the first year, Exodus 12 and 5, in its prime. And so we see that Christ, you, you, we often wonder, why 33 and a half years old? Well, Christ was offered up in the midst of his prime, in the prime years of his life. Not in infancy, not as an aged old man, but right there in the prime of his life, he hung on that cross. uh, And he uh, denoted the strength and the sufficiency of him as a man and uh, the Lord Jesus as a whole. And all that was laid upon him there in that time in accordance to the word of God to be our Passover. That lamb was to be without blemish, Exodus 12 and 5. And that denoted the purity of the Lord. Jesus is a lamb without spot or blemish, according to 1 Peter 1 and 19. said, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. That lamb was to be set apart four days before Exodus, according to Exodus 12, verses 3 and 6. And that denoted the designation of Jesus to be a Savior in his purpose, and in his promise. So we look at this and we see that Christ was crucified at the Passover, so he entered into Jerusalem four days before the very day that the Paschal Lamb was set apart. There is no coincidences in the Word of God. Number five, that Passover Lamb was to be slain and roasted with fire, according to Exodus 12, 6 through 9. So we look and we see, uh, as we look at Christ, that he suffered, even unto the death, the death of the cross. You know what that raft of God is? Is as fire. And Christ was made a curse for us. Number six, that Passover lamb was to be killed by the whole congregation between the two evenings. That is, between three o'clock and six o'clock. And we know that Christ suffered in the end of the world. According to Hebrews 9 and 26, it said, For them must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, by the hand of the Jews, the whole multitude of them. And then Luke 23 and 18, They cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man and release unto us Barabbas, and for the good of all his spiritual Israel. So just as that Passover lamb was to be sacrificed by all, killed by a whole congregation between two evenings, so was Christ. And we know that it was at that three o'clock, between that three o'clock and six o'clock hour when we study the word of God, that he gave up the ghost and it was finished. Another very interesting thing that we find in these comparisons for that Passover lamb is not a bone of it could be broken according to Exodus 12 and 46. And that is expressly said to be fulfilled by Christ. John 19 and 33 and 36 said, But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. And it was, it was their custom to break their legs, but they didn't do that for, uh, for because they didn't feel like it was what they needed to do. No, it was because Scripture was being fulfilled. Why? Because Jesus was our Passover. Uh, he was that door, that Passover door for you and I. And uh, he is our Passover. And he had to bear every 
comparison to that Passover lamb according to the word of God. So it says there, and they break not his legs. And then verse 36 says, For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. That had another... uh, Excuse me, that had another meaning. It denoted the unbroken strength of our Lord Jesus. So it was not enough that the blood of the Passover lamb was shed, but it also had to be sprinkled. And that denoted the application of the merits of Christ's death for our souls so we can receive that atonement. Romans 5 and 11 says, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So that blood, it was to be sprinkled there in in the time of the children of Israel, to be sprinkled on the doorpost, and that denoted for us the open profession we are to make of faith in Christ and obedience to Him as those that are not ashamed to our own dependence upon Him. Isaiah 35 and 8, prophecy says, And a highway shall be there. And away, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. It was to be sprinkled upon the lintel and the side posts, but not upon the threshold, according to Exodus 12 and 7. What did that mean? What does that mean to us? We know what it meant for them, but what does that mean to us with Jesus being the Passover lamb? It cautions us to take heed of trampling underfoot the blood of the covenant, according to Hebrews 10 and 29. It's precious blood, and it must be precious to us. So we understand that Jesus is the Passover. We gave seven different comparisons there between uh, the Passover lamb found there in Exodus for the children of Israel and Jesus, our Passover lamb. Everything that he did and everything uh, that was accomplished through Christ, the same as that Passover lamb, the comparisons were there. But after that blood was shed, there was a responsibility of the children of Israel to apply that blood to the lintel and to the side posts. Uh, and it's also important important that we understand the covenant of that precious blood, that we're not to trample the blood of Jesus underneath the feet of men. It's precious blood, and it's got to be precious to us. Jesus is our Passover, and the shedding of His blood on the cross was an atonement for our sin, according to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever, whoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is what it means to us. The writer of Hebrews puts it so wonderfully in Hebrews 10, 19 through 23. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, the flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. I want to leave you this afternoon with this old song, the words to it. I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going to read it. For his blood was not just blood of another spotless lamb. But his blood was precious blood, for it washed the sins of men. And his blood, it heals my body and sets my spirit free. I'm so glad his precious blood still flows from Calvary. Aren't you thankful for our Passover door? Aren't you thankful for our Passover lamb, which is Christ Jesus, and that the blood is still there. It's not lost its power. I still claim the blood of that great Passover lamb, and I'm thankful that there's still that Passover door, that we've got to take that precious blood and make sure it's been applied to our house, that we may claim the blood. So today we need to plead the blood. Today we need to claim the blood. And today we need to receive the promises that come with being blood-bought and redeemed. Father, we love you today. Thank you for being our Passover lamb, being that Passover door through your son Jesus for us. There, in that time of suffering, he paid a great price. His blood was not shed in vain, so we claim that blood today. We claim it knowing it's no merit of our own. Lord God, the price that was paid for us, and we're so thankful for the opportunity 
to have that blood applied to the doorpost of our house. We're just so grateful to you and thank you today for your grace and your mercy. Give us strength throughout the day. and Give us a great afternoon and we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in today. Join back with us tomorrow as we talk about the sheep's door. God bless you and I love you.